Hey, what's going on guys? So first of all, thank you so much for the incredible response to my Star Wars Episode 1 video. A lot of you guys seem to really dig it and many of you were asking me to do more. Well, let's just do that with Star Wars Episode 2. Oh, and if you're new to the channel, definitely watch the Episode 1 video I did first, cause I won't be covering actors that made their debut in that movie. I'm only going to talk about new characters here. Also, before I begin, know that Star Wars up till this point was shot mostly in the UK. But for episodes 2 and 3, production was moved to Fox Studios in Sydney. So yeah, get ready for a surprising onslaught of Aussies and Kiwis in this video. This is every actor in Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Senator, we're making our final approach into Coruscant. So let's start with this Naboo Lieutenant who is played by English actor Steve John Shepard. Shepard mostly sticks to the small screen. He's probably most famous for his role as Michael Moon in EastEnders. Ever wanted to see the most PG rated knife death in history? <laughs> well, now you have. Oh, and here he is in Layer Kick, acting alongside Daniel Craig. To be a doddle. All the same, aren't they? Fucking junkies and crackheads. Chuck him a few quid. I'll cough. I guess I was wrong. There was no danger at all. So the first of many oceanic actors in this video is the diversely talented Jay Lagaya playing the role of Captain Typho. This guy is amazing. He's had a prolific acting career on New Zealand and Australian television, appearing in shows like the soap opera Home and Away. Well, have you asked yourself? Yes. And all the answers I come up with involve you. Here he is playing the warlord Draco in Xena Warrior Princess. Cena, you look good. And Lagaya is a supremely talented singer as well, appearing in many Australian stage productions like here in Wicked. Cause it feels wonderful. They think I'm wonderful. Hey, look who's wonderful. This corn fed hick. And he also performed in The Lion King too, of which in he played Mufasa. Yeah, but you didn't realize Star Wars had two Mufasas in it, huh? What? He also does a lot of songs for children, and you can bet your ass I'm going to play his Christmas album this year. A jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. A jingle bell swing and jingle bell ring. Snowing and blowing up bushels of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. Lady, I'm so sorry. I failed you, Senator. Playing the, um late handmaiden Corday is Mexican actress and writer Veronica Segura. Segura has had minor roles in films and TV. Here she is in the comedy slasher flick Club Dread, acting alongside Bill Paxton. Well, hey, how about the grand tour? Yeah, sure. Right this way. Also from 2006 to 2008, she wrote columns for the Mexican edition of Playboy. You really think that's a wise decision under these stressful times? American actor Jimmy Smits plays Senator Bail Organa. Smits has had a lush television career. His very first role was in the pilot episode of Miami Vice. Just the pilot episode. No! Quick tip, stay clear of Jimmy Smits. He has a habit of getting unexpectedly blown up. But his career only went up from there, from his award-winning stints in shows like LA Law and NYPD Blue. Police! Oh, and back in 1989, he played the role of a repairman on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Is that a wrench in your pocket? Oh, that's a wrench. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Yvonne. Yvonne. <laughs> Take a deep breath. I haven't seen her in 10 years, Master. So, grown up Anakin is played by Canadian actor Hayden Christensen. Now, Christensen got his acting start in commercials, advertising everything from cough syrup to cereal. Let's do it! Breakfast isn't breakfast without... Snap, crackle, crackle, Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Then he transitioned to acting in many TV shows, with appearances in Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps, of which in he gets transformed into a puppet. So, hey, did you hear the one about the three kids that tried to outsmart that dummy? No, Sloppy, tell me all about it! Ironically, this would only rank second in Hayden Christensen's most wooden performances. Okay, okay, sorry. That was harsh. 
No, in, in all honesty, Christensen is not a bad actor, and you only need to look outside of his Star Wars career to see that. In between episodes 2 and 3, he was praised for his performance in the 2003 biographical drama film Shattered Glass. There are 16,800 magazines in this country, but only one calls itself the in-flight magazine of Air Force One. And that's the thrill of working at the New Republic. And after Star Wars, he went on to do many more films, none of which were particularly successful. He reunited with Samuel L. Jackson for 2008's Jumper. He acted alongside Nicolas Cage in the 2014 American Chinese production of Outcast. And most recently, he acted alongside Harvey Keitel in the sci-fi film The Last Man. Oh, and in 2018, he took part in a charity football match here in the UK. Ever wanted to see Darth Vader take a penalty against Martian Manhunter? Christensen way over! Well, not like that you wouldn't. I may have to kill myself. I hit the ship, but they used a decoy. So Zan Wiesel is played by Australian actress Liana Walsman. Walsman got the role when casting director Robin Gerland saw her perform in a play. And that play also happened to star actress Rose Byrne. And I'll talk about her next. Outside of Star Wars, Walsman has done lots of TV show work. Here she is in the Australian prison drama Wentworth. Yeah, I know. They don't want to hear about rehabilitation and what it costs. They want to know that the criminals are locked up and they can sleep safely at night. So I am selling it to them as money well spent to ensure their safety when the women are released. And in 2004, she got a starring role in the TV miniseries Jessica, acting alongside Alan Grant himself, Sam Neill. And you say that if I sign and agree to give up, Joey, then it's forever. You'd rather stay in here than sign. You all right, my lady? So yes, we have the now well-known Rose Byrne playing the handmaiden Dorme. You'll know Byrne for her wealth of film roles. Bridesmaids, Neighbours, Insidious, X-Men, the list goes on. But what about her roles pre-Star Wars? Well, her very first acting gig was in the 1994 Australian drama Dallas Doll. It's exactly the right astrological conditions for a UFO to land. It's gonna happen. I know it. Another one of her early roles was in the comedy crime film Two Hands, starring alongside the Joker himself, Heath Ledger. Making boats? Yeah. Well, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah. Better than hanging around assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Ledger, he was actually one of the actors in the running to play adult Anakin in the prequels. I actually think that would have been a great choice. I could totally see that. So these two alien motorists here are voiced by General Grievous himself, Matthew Wood. I talked about Wood in my Phantom Menace video. This guy's voice knows no bounds. You wanna buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Australian actor Matt Duran plays the death stick dealer Elan Slees Bagano. Yeah, seriously, that's his name. Most recently, Duran had a starring role in an Australian thriller production called Intersection. Your thirst for money is insatiable. Yeah, I did what you said. Hi, my sister's getting a visa. I'm not getting any of his company. No, you can let Josh go. Though you'll definitely know Duran best as Mouse from The Matrix. To deny our own impulses is to deny the very thing that makes us human. Oh, and speaking of The Matrix... <laughs> See this woman checking out Anakin? That is actress Fiona Johnson, who you might know better as the lady in the red dress. That they will fight to protect it. So yeah, in this nightclub scene is both Mouse and the woman he designed? There's a theory there somewhere. At Matt Pat, Super Carlin Brothers, any theory channel out there? Go nuts. <laughs> So we have a few more notable cameos in this scene I want to rush through. Recognize this patron? This is of course C-3PO himself, Anthony Daniels in the flesh. There is one thing worse than working with me, it's being an extra in a Star Wars movie, okay? <laughs> 
And in this shot, we have Jar Jar Binks actor Ahmed Best on the right, and on the left is daughter of George Lucas, Katie, as this purple Twi'lek. This Jedi walks by and ruins my action. Her sister Amanda also shows up in this scene, right here. And there is another child of George Lucas that appears in the film, but I'll talk about him in my episode 3 video. Someone to see you, honey! So this is interesting. This droid, known as Flo, is voiced by Australian actress Susie Porter. Now you see this lady sat next to Dex? Believe it or not, that is Susie Porter in the flesh. Yeah, she voices the droid in this scene, but she's also here in a live action capacity. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Apparently this scene was shot twice, with Porter performing her lines in live action and in a voiceover booth. And then they decided to go the droid route for the final edit. Anyway, Porter has had many film and television roles, like Walsman she also starred in Wentworth, but many seasons after Walsman left. Shit lawyers, don't do anything to aggravate your sentence. Keep your head down well. Where did that get me? Oh, well, now people are gonna pay. And she starred in a few raunchier titles in her time, like the 2000 Aussie rom-com Better Than Sex, where she has a one-night stand with Faramir himself, David Wenham. So London. Must be an exciting place to live. Yeah. Yeah, apart from the cold, the rain, the filth, the huge cost of everything. Oh, and the English, no. It's a great place to live. <laughs> what you got here is a Camino Saber Dart. Playing Dexter Jetster is Australian actor Ronald Falk. Hey! Oh, hey! Falk is sadly no longer with us, but he was a prolific stage actor with a few on-screen roles in his time, like here in the Guy Pearce-led Aussie crime series, Jack Irish. No, no, I, I thought I might have dropped something, but... I hate to say it, but it looks like the system you're searching for doesn't exist. Another Australian actor who unfortunately passed away is actress Alethea McGrath, playing Jedi Master Jocasta Nu. Now according to McGrath, it was originally planned that Nu was going to be written as a former lover of Count Dooku, though this idea got scrapped for the movie's release. Anyway, back in the late 80s, early 90s, McGrath had the occasional stint in the Australian soap Neighbours. Now look love, I think you're making some kind of mistake. I mean, I haven't been near the clothesline since I got here. Fiddlesticks! And don't you love me, you pervert! And more recently, she starred in films like Inspector Gadget 2. Ma'am. Do you know that drag racing on public roads is illegal? The doffs are right. There are no buts when it comes to the law. And her last role was alongside Nicolas Cage in Knowing. I knew something had frightened the poor dear, but we never could get her to tell us what it was. Hey you, no droids. <laughs> get out of here. Yet another actor no longer with us is Kiwi Ian Watkin, providing the voice of the food server droid here. Now Watkin was originally planned to appear in live action here, but much like the situation with Susie Porter, George Lucas opted for a droid server instead. Now outside of Star Wars, Watkin had various acting roles. Here he is in one of Peter Jackson's early works, 1992's Brain Dead. And oh my lord, I gotta be careful with what I show here, cause this film, like many of Jackson's pre Lord of the Rings works, is gory. Step right up, you scream out bastard! <laughs> Master? Because someone erased it from the archive memory. So remember in my episode 1 video where I talked about that Naboo star pilot that gets killed being played by Photoshop co-creator and visual effects whiz John Noel? Yeah, well this kid is his son, Alex Noel. Literally the only other thing I can find out about Alex though is that he voiced this dog wizard character in Politicats, one of the animated shows Mosh did on their Shut Up Cartoons channel. Random, I know. There's lots of dogs here, but I'm the only one that's also a wizard. Do you see any way through negotiations to bring the Separatists back into the Republic? Playing Queen Jamilia is British Indian actress Aisha Darker. Darker received great acclaim for her role as a young woman brainwashed into contemplating becoming a suicide bomber in the 1997 Tamil film The Terrorist. She's also done work with the Royal Shakespeare Company and has appeared in many British television shows like Holby City, Doctor Who and Coronation Street. 
I gave you chance after chance to come clean. No more secrets. Ring any bells. After all these years, we were beginning to think you weren't coming. Playing the Kaminoan Tawn Ware is New Zealand actress Raina Owen, who actually was there on set wearing this on her head. Makes sense, you gotta make sure McGregor's eyeline is correct, but credit to the actors for keeping a straight face. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Owen has appeared in many movies and shows. Here she is alongside Vin Diesel in The Last Witch Hunter. The laws serve to control and contain magic. It is only by the operations of this council that another war does not begin. But her most famous role was in the 1994 film Once Were Warriors, directed by Die Another Day director Lee Tamahori. I wasn't there when Grace needed me. This time I'm gonna do the right thing by her, and you're not gonna stop me. This movie was a huge hit in New Zealand, and also happened to star Django Fett himself, Tamara Morrison. I'll be talking about him very soon. Please tell your master, Cypher Diaz, that his order will be met on time. Lama Sue is voiced by Australian actor Anthony Phelan. Like many Aussie actors, Phelan had a stint in Home and Away. In it, he gets crushed to death by a car, but he later comes back to life to walk his daughter down the aisle. Awfully nice of God to resurrect him like that. You didn't think I was going to miss my beautiful girl's wedding, did you? He also played this priest in the Angelina Jolie directed film Unbroken. Love, thine, enemy. And here he is in the TV series The Gloaming, which also happened to star his fellow Kaminoan, Raina Owen. Lama Sue and Tonway back together in the flesh. It's always about your self interest. Watch your mouth! We're in this mess because of you and your temper. How do you think Grace feels having you in this house? They are totally obedient, taking any order without question. So for the longest time, I always assumed these clones were played by Tamura Morrison, when in fact, these particular ones are played by fellow Kiwi, Bodhi Taylor. Taylor has only two roles outside of Star Wars. Here he is in the 2003 film, The Legend of Johnny Lingo, playing the role of Pua. The women have gone mad over this Johnny Lingo. I hope we get the host of my own welcome party. But more recently, Taylor started his own YouTube channel where he documented the making of a taiha, a traditional Maori staff weapon. Basically, it's a very hard wood and uh, very um, interesting to carve. Dad, Ton Wee's here. Playing the young Boba Fett is Kiwi actor Daniel Logan. Now, what's immediately interesting about Logan is that he has a previous link to fellow clone actor Bodhi Taylor, for he too was in The Legend of Johnny Lingo, playing the younger version of Taylor's character. We'll see who's uglier once we get finished with you. So yeah, these two have played differently aged versions of each other on two different occasions. Whether that's a huge coincidence or not, I haven't been able to find out. Now, Logan had acted prior to Star Wars. Here he is in an episode of Hercules The Legendary Journeys as a sort of demonic illusion with some facial VFX that hasn't aged too well. <laughs> and post Attack of the Clones, he reprised the role of Boba in the animated Clone Wars show. We're all in it together, right? Thanks. But I can handle myself. And he's continued acting still. But you might find his cameo in Sharknado 4 interesting, for he plays the role of, get this, Captain Fett. The pulse didn't work! The thing is still moving, and it's headed straight toward Vegas! They'll do their job well. I'll guarantee that. So yeah, New Zealand actor Tamura Morrison plays Django Fett. Morrison has been in a load of stuff. You might know him as Aquaman's dad. How is it that I can breathe underwater but you can still drink me on the table? That's my superpower. <laughs> he also played Moana's dad. I know, I know, but you don't go out there. It's dangerous. And remember that alien that gives Ryan Reynolds the ring in Green Lantern? I was personally surprised to find out that was Morrison. The ring, it shows you. Take it. Place the ring in the lantern. 
Morrison is also good friends with Jay Lagaya. He was best man at his wedding after all. And like Lagaya, Morrison also loves to sing. In 2014, he released a cover album called Ten. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Also, it's definitely worth noting Django Fett's stunt double, Scott McLean. And this story might ring a bell for some of you. You see, in the early 2010s, McLean was doing stunts for the second installment in the Hangover series. And he very almost died when performing a dangerous stunt on the streets of Bangkok. It was a massive controversy and he took the filmmakers to court for the working conditions they put him under. Though I'm pleased to report, he recovered. But I think this here is a good reminder of how dangerous a stunt person's job can be at times. I guess I'm your stepbrother. I had a feeling you might show up someday. So here we have another well-known actor who wasn't particularly famous at the time of filming. This is, of course, Australian actor Joel Edgerton playing the young Owen Lars. Edgerton went on to act in more films than I can count. The Great Gatsby, Zero Dark Thirty, Black Mass, and Bright. I wanted to be a cop since I was a little kid. I have nothing else. My badge means more to me than the air I breathe. And in 2015, he directed and starred in the psychological thriller, The Gift. Are you gonna tell her, or should I? Also worth noting that Joel Edgerton's brother, Nash Edgerton, worked as Ewan McGregor's stunt double for episodes two and three. This is my girlfriend, Baru. Hello. And playing the young Baru is fellow Australian, Bonnie Peace. Peace has acted in many films and shows. She made her debut as a trapeze artist on the Australian kids' show, High Flyers. The guy, who is he? You've got to pick him for your stooge. He's so cute. In a weird sort of way. And this is crazy. In 2017, she, along with her husband, became a whistleblower of a sex trafficking cult called Nixon. There was an HBO documentary all about this. In 2020, their founder, Keith Rainier, got sentenced to 120 years in jail, and his associate, Smallville actress Alison Mack, got jail time too. But back to Bonnie, for she's also an avid singer slash songwriter. Here's a track from her most recent EP, Found. It broke my After I lost my leg, I just couldn't ride anymore until I heal. Australian actor Jack Thompson plays Klee Glass. Now, outside of Australia, Thompson's not that well known, but he's a big name down under, coming to prominence during the Australian New Wave era in films like Sunday Too Far Away and The Man from Snowy River, where he acted alongside Kirk Douglas. You should advertise this stuff in the bulletin. The new miracle cure for appetite. Oh, you think I was going to leave you a share of the mind. Thompson, though, could have become a big name internationally when he met up with Steven Spielberg and actually filmed screen tests for the role of Oscar Schindler in Schindler's List. But at the last minute, Spielberg had a change of heart and opted instead to cast fellow Star Wars actor Liam Neeson. As I explained to you earlier, I am quite convinced that 10,000 more systems will rally to our cause with your support, gentlemen. The absolute legend that is the late Sir Christopher Lee plays Count Dooku. Where do I begin? Dracula, Lord Summerisle, Saruman. You know what this guy's done, so let me tell you what you might not know about him. Prior to becoming an actor, he served in the Royal Air Force during the Second World War. In 1962, Ian Fleming, the author of the James Bond books, actually offered him the role of the villainous Dr. No, and he accepted. Though the film's producers had other ideas, so he missed out, and had to wait another 12 years before he got his shot at another Bond villain, Scaramanga, in The Man with the Golden Gun. Now you know the classic spoof comedy Airplane? Lee turned down a role in that movie, and that role instead went to Leslie Nielsen. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Lee went on to call that decision a big mistake. Though, to be fair, it's hard to imagine anyone but Nielsen playing that role. Another mistake Lee made was unknowingly choosing to star in a softcore porn film. It was called Eugenie, and he plays the role of a narrator, only appearing in scenes where everyone has their clothes on. 
for no voice save that of the passions can bring you to complete happiness. Now I can't continue without talking about Lee's music career, for he found he had a hell of a passion for symphonic heavy metal. And once I'm done chilling out to jail a Gaia, you can bet your ass I'm gonna be rocking to Jingle Hell. Jingle Hell, Jingle Hell, Jingle Hell. The Techno Union Army is at your disposal, Count. English-born Australian actor Christopher Truswell, I have to thank, for he's made my job very easy here. He voices every single bloody alien in this scene and then some. Here is all the roles he plays. <laughs> Their banking clan will sign your treaty. We must get the starships back into space. Is at your disposal, Count. Probably self-made by a warrior, not associated with any known society. That is all the same guy. That's incredible. Now, outside of Star Wars, Truswell was best known for his role on the Australian sitcom, Hey Dad. Actually, it's gotten a lot better lately. Well, I'm pleased to hear it. Oh, last week he only tried to strangle me twice. <laughs> no, he laughs when he does it. <laughs> and he's a talented singer too. You might be interested to know he played Elwood in a stage production of the Blues Brothers. My heart's calculating, my sweetheart will be waiting. The Trade Federation is to take delivery of a droid army here. And it is clear that Viceroy Gunray is behind the assassination attempts on Senator Amidala. So you might wonder why I'm going to focus on some random extra here, but bear with me. This senator stood next to Jar Jar here is played by Australian actress Nicole Fantel. Now, if you've played Final Fantasy XII, I've got a quick game for you. Listen to Fantel's voice in the film Queen of the Damned and see if you can pinpoint who she plays in that game. Take a listen. So this is Lestat's house. Are you hungry for something else? Don't you want to have some fun? Don't do that. Okay, brownie points if you got it, because she plays the role of Fran. You've let your eyes betray your heart. Yeah, kind of interesting we have here an actor who's bridged the gap between Star Wars and Final Fantasy, given the Biggs and Wedge references they've done over the years. Playing this alien is Australian makeup and visual effects artist Stephen Boyle. And I am shocked about this find, for I have googled the shit out of it, and I haven't heard anyone else mention it. So I'm totally taking credit for this. Boyle's line in the film is back to front. Watch what happens when you play it in reverse. We need that Pretty interesting, right? Anyway, this is Boyle's only time in front of the camera, for his focus is on creature design and makeup visual effects. He's worked as a makeup effects technician on films like The Matrix Revolutions, King Kong, and many, many more productions. This is a crisis. The Senate must vote the Chancellor emergency powers. So, I already talked about this Senate speaker in my episode 1 video, where he was played by Jerome St. John Blake. But in some scenes such as this in episode 2, he's played by a different person. This right here is Australian actor David Bowers, who's had bit roles in various films and shows. For example, here he is in The Matrix Revolutions. Anyway, you're getting through this door. It's over my big dead ass. <laughs> Okay, so this one has been extremely confusing to research, as there's a lot of conflicting information on the internet as to who even plays the Geonosian leader, Poggle the Lesser here. Because according to IMDB, he's played by Marton Chokas, who you might know better as Dr. Kafka in Amazing Spider-Man 2, and Celeborn in The Lord of the Rings. Tell me where is Gandalf, for I much desire to speak with him. However, as I found out, Chokas simply was there on set speaking the lines. You know, for reference for the VFX and ADR work in post. But 
Even that info is weird, because I then found out about an actor called Richard Stride, and there's many sources that say that he mo-capped for Poggle. So perhaps these two split the work between them? Unfortunately, I can't confirm. His voice actor, however, is a bit more certain. This scrambled vocal track you can see Bender playing around with here. Look up the B. Could be better. Could be better. Yeah, that's the voice of Ernie Phaselius, who's best known for directing the very first Star Wars parody, 1978's Hardware Wars. I'll be all right. Don't worry about me. Oh, oh what a martyr. 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 I don't See you later, you martyr. You. Now, Ben Burt seems to fall back on Phaselius from time to time, for he provided the voice of those Chinese pilots in the Temple of Doom. Oh, we got it. And remember that guy upset over the death of the Rancor? The sound of him sobbing is not his voice, it's that of Phaselius. <laughs> <Good to play. laughs> Good to play. Okay, so there's a ton of people to talk about here, and I can't possibly mention everyone. Not that there'd be any reason to, as a lot of these performers aren't very well known, and for many, Star Wars Episode 2 is their only credit. And many of these actors are simply uncredited, so I have no way of knowing who some of these guys are. But let's rush through everyone who I can find out at least something about. Let's go. Ayla Sakura, played by Amy Allen. She worked as one of ILM's production assistants, and also cameos in the night scene as a set of triplets. Plo Koon, played by Matt Sloan. He was one of the film's animatronic technicians. Kit Fisto and CC Teen, played by Zachariah Jensen and Jesse Jensen. Lumping these two together because they are brothers who worked as set carpenters on the movie. Luminara Unduli, played by Mary Oyaya. Born in Kenya and did a lot of commercial and modeling work in Australia. Baris Offi, played by Nalini Krishan, a Fiji born actress who does occasional acting work in Australia and in Bollywood. Egan Kola, played by Tux Akinda Yeni, a practitioner of the Chinese martial art, Li Hui Bafa. Definitely butchering that one. Tux now works as a personal trainer and managing director of a security company in Sydney. Bulta Swan, played by Mimi Darafe. She was doing a degree in architecture when she filmed this and graduated a year later. Nikonas Tasu and Seth Jet Josal, played by Nick Anastasu and Joseph Jet Sally. These guys worked on the film as editors. Represent. Kat Keen, played by Zoraya Hamilton. Zoraya was a department coordinator on the film and now owns a cocktail bar and restaurant on the Gold Coast in Australia. Joe Clad Danver, played by Kyle Rowling. Now, this guy worked as Christopher Lee's stunt double during his fight scenes. He also stands in for General Grievous in the next movie, where he wears a green screen suit, and he works to choreograph the fight scenes themselves. In fact, the man himself teaches a lightsaber course at the National Institute of Dramatic Art in Sydney. Holy shit, I want to do that course. Roth Del Masona, played by Leonard L. Thomas. Now this guy's a prominent actor. Here he is reuniting with Samuel L. Jackson in the movie Black Snake Moon. You think I want to hurt you, lass? Man, I'll take a bullet for you. Would you now? And last but not least, let's talk about Shark T, who is played by Israeli actress and model Oli Shoshan, a former member of the Israeli Defense Forces, much like actress Gal Gadot, actually. Shoshan went on to have a successful modeling career in Australia, making appearances in the Australian version of Wheels of Fortune, where she presented prizes. She then went on to design her own fashion line for women's sportswear and lingerie, and more recently she worked in interior design and as a real estate agent. Now, there's definitely more actors in this scene, but information on everyone else is either uninteresting or non-existent. So, let's move on. Right after I address this bombshell. Apparently, George Lucas's daughters, Katie and Amanda, were big fans of the boy band NSYNC. So as a treat for them, George arranged it so that three members of the band, JC, Chris and Joey, filmed cameos for this movie. They were set to appear in the Geonosis battle scene as Jedi. Now, for whatever reason, they didn't make the final cut. Those Star Wars fans and NSYNC fans? That's an extremely narrow demographic you're appealing to there. So I guess maybe they thought there'd be too much backlash from pissy Star Wars fans. 
Though it is crazy to think that within the Lucasfilm vault somewhere lies footage of NSYNC as Jedis. Not gonna lie, I kinda wanna see that footage. Hashtag release the NSYNC cut. We must get the starships back into space. So the Neimoidian Rune Harko was played by Jerome St. John Blake and voiced by James Taylor in Episode 1, but in Episode 2, he's voiced by the previously mentioned Christopher Truswell, but the man inside the mask is British actor Alan Rusko. Rusko does a lot of acting work, specialising in playing many aliens and monsters in films and shows like The Fifth Element and Doctor Who. <laughs> So there we go, that's every actor of note in Star Wars Episode 2. Definitely want to keep this series going, so let me know in the comments what movie you think I should cover next. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and here's some links if you want to see more from me. Take care.